assalamu alaikum and uh, today's topic is clinicals of cranium and uh, so we move on and uh, see that uh, first of all we encounter in clinicals uh, head injuries so in the head injuries you know uh, there has to be uh, there are various uh, aspects of uh, that major cause of death and disability motor vehicle motorcycle accidents mostly in young persons between the ages of 15 and 24 years so this is a thing so and um, the complications of head injuries are uh, you know hemorrhage infection and injury to brain and cranial nerves hemorrhage infection and injury to the brain and cranial nerve and there can occur disturbance in the level of consciousness disturbance in level of consciousness which is very common symptom but the most common symptom so that's point and uh, this is a headache and facial pain so one of the commonest complaint headache and facial pain it's usually benign and frequently associated with the tension, fatigue, or mild fever. So very common occurring every other person, every other day. All of the people do experience headaches so due to generally tension, fatigue, or mild fever. They may indicate a serious intracranial problem, problem at times. Serious intracranial problem at times. For example, a brain tumor. Subarachnoid hemorrhage or meningitis. You know the meninges and the inflammation of the meninges is meningitis. So it's very high grade fever compared with other symptoms. And uh, these three things. Then moving on, there are uh, neuralgias. What is a neuralgia? This is uh, characterized by severe throbbing or stabbing pain in the course of a nerve. It's caused by a demyelinating limb. They are a common cause of facial pain. So now we that was uh, talking about the headache, and now we talk about the facial pain. So the facial pain uh, is a common cause is a neuralgia. This is what is that? This is a stabbing pain or throbbing pain in the course of a nerve. Because there occurs a demyelination while in sheath is removed. That is the diffuse, painful sensations described by term facial neuralgia. Facial neuralgia is a diffuse, painful sensation. You know, there is a, one uh, trigeminal neuralgia, it's present in the face, trigeminal neuralgia. Then the localized aches, so it was diffuse and no localized main. That is the otalgia. Pain in the ear, earache, otalgia, and odontalgia, toothache. Otalgia, earache, and odontalgia, toothache. Then uh, injury to the superciliary arches. You know the normal frontal study, and uh, superciliary arches are sharp bony ridges. So a blow to them, for example, during boxing, may lacerate the skin and cause bleeding bruising of the skin surrounding the orbit causes tissue fluid and blood to accumulate in the surrounding connective tissue which gravitates into the superior eyelid and around the eye so this is ecchymosis the black eye you see the picture this is black eye see i can you see the eyes and uh, there is accumulation of the you see here blood tissue fluid blood and uh, in just study the anatomy of the scalp, we you know why the fluid trickles down, the blood trickles down, see it in down the orbit. And, and this is a black eye chemosis. Then malar flush, malar flush. You see the picture? This is malar flush. It is malar, you know, the zygomatic bone area, the cheek area, prominence of the cheek, cheek is the malar flush. So you see that uh, this is, uh, let me show for you, highlight it. Yes, here you could see. And uh, this was the uh, annotation. 
just a while. Let me annotate for you. This is these area. You see the red circle moving. This is the Miller flush. The reddish hue here, and uh, it is due to certain diseases, uh, the, which is like uh, tuberculosis or uh, systemic lupus erythematosus. So listed over here, you can see. This is the Miller flush, right? Various fevers, tuberculosis, and SLD. Systemic lupus erythematosus. Then the fractures of the maxillae and associated bones. So the various three types of fracture of uh, written for you in the picture here. The less fort one, less fort two, and less fort three. Less fort three, less fort two, and less fort one. These are various kinds of fractures. What happens is uh, you see the pictures they better for you. So this is list four fracture one. This is the fracture side. Yes, it is in which bone? This is maxilla, below the nasal bone, above the alveolar arch. So it is fractures here. This portion is in the front fracture, right? So this is a list four fracture one, and in list four fracture two, what happens? This is you know the sides is a maxilla, the siding to the border with the Zygomatic bone and uh, going to the infraorbital margins, then above this nasal bone, this is the point of the nasion. This is less four two where the fracture is. And in less four three, this is here in the zygomatic bone and uh, also extending from this through the orbits here. So as you see, and uh, then this is uh, again the your frontal bone is like that. So you can uh, see the little bit of detail in uh, your uh, next, uh, you know, picture. yes, you see, that's fourth one. Was superior to the maxillian that I have shown to you. Uh, this is less four two. Postrolateral parts of the maxilla, the sinus is the maxilla bone, and the last four three, of course, through the superior orbital fissures mainly. This was you could see the superior orbital fissures, the last four three, and the fractures of the calvaria. Calvaria is a skull case, so this fractures because the calvaria is convex, so. It distributes and thereby usually minimizes the effects of a blow to the head. But hard blows in thin area of cal calvaria produce depressed fractures and uh, it injures the brain. And the linear calvarial fracture, linear calvarial fractures, the most frequent type usually occur at the point of impact. But fracture lines often radiate away from it in two to more directions. Very common, linear. Then third is the comminuted fractures. The bone is broken into several pieces. If the area of the calvary is thick at the site of the impact, the bone may bend inward without fracturing. And the last is a contrary coup or the counter blow. Contrary coup and counter blow fracture. No fracture occur at the point of impact. At the point of impact, there is no fracture, but it occurs, the fracture. Fracture occurs on the opposite side of the cranium. So on the opposite side, this is contrary to fracture. You could see the various types of the, these fractures. So here you see, this is a depressed fracture. If you see the this red spotlight, this is a depressed fracture. Uh, this is a comminuted fracture. Bone is, you, it, it is uh, broken into various pieces. This is comminuted fracture. This is a fracture at the base, the basilar fracture. Right, these are two, three types. And let me 
again show you now. So this is the thing. This is the linear fracture. This is the basilar fracture. This is the comminuted fracture. This is the depressed fracture. It's various types of fractures. These damage the structures inside. Now a few words about the surgical access to the cranial cavity, the bone flaps. What are this? So two terms, craniotomy and craniectomy. Craniotomy and number two, craniectomy. What are these? Craniotomy is a surgical access to the cranial cavity. So by, that is achieved by performing a surgical access to the cranial cavities achieved by performing a craniotomy. What happens in craniotomy? A section of the neurocranium called a bone flap is elevated or removed. Because adult pericranium has poor osteogenic properties, little regeneration occurs after bone loss. Surgically produced bone flaps are put back into the place and wired to other parts of the calvaria or held in place temporarily with metal plates. Reintegration is most successful when the bone is reflected with its overlying muscle and skin so that it retains its own blood supply during the procedure and after repositioning. So this was a, uh, what craniotomy and what is craniectomy? If the bone flap is not replaced, that is a permanent plastic or metal plate replaces the flap then the procedure is called craniectomy. So difference between craniotomy and craniectomy. In craniectomy, the bone flap is not replaced, right? So permanent plastic or metal plate places the cap. To see the picture, just again annotate that. Yes, you see, this is uh, flap, bone flap, this, this is, you see the pointer, this is the bone flap, they're removing that, and this exposes the brain, they removed, this, they, they separated the, the stura, and from below, they, with the overlying, our skin and muscle, they removed this bone flap, so here, this is the bone flap, so this is craniotomy, the bone flap is removed, with the Overlying skin and muscle. Then a very simple thing: molding of calvaria, molding of calvaria, which is known as caput succedaneum. So, what is that caput? You see the caput. It's very simple. You know what is lying at this point and uh, this anterior fontanel and posterior fontanel, right? So what happens uh, during childbirth? Uh, fontanel slide on each other and the head of the baby gets smaller to get through into the vagina for the vaginal delivery. So this, sometimes the swelling is produced in this part of the skull, which is temporary. To Goes off automatically. This is known as caput uh, succedaneum. Caput succedaneum. This is uh, this. Okay. So age changes in face. Well, there are you know first deciduous teeth in the face, deciduous the milk teeth, deciduous teeth. Then there are the permanent teeth after that. And there also occurs increase in the size of the paranasal sinuses. Told you about sinuses. You know the sinuses. So the paranasal sinuses increase in size. Growth of the paranasal sinuses is important in altering the shape of the face and in adding resonance to the voice. So paranasal sinuses roles are they add a resonance to the voice and alter or change the shape of the face. Here you can see some of the sinuses. So let me show for you. Here you could please see. Yes, this is frontal. Here you go. This is the eyeball, and this is your mm, uh, ethmoidal sinus, right? And this is maxillary sinus. Maxillary, ethmoidal, frontal. 
this is various and you focus here on this which is labeled maxillary sinus it's opening and this is the ethmoidal sinus other sinuses are frontal and sphenoidal sinuses So obliteration of cranial sutures, obliteration of cranial sutures. So cranial sutures, which fibrous joints are obliterated. They obliterate between the ages of 30 and 40 years on the internal surface. And on the outer surface, 10 years later. So obliteration of sutures usually begins at Bregma and continues sequentially in the sagittal, coronal, and the lambdoid sutures. As you could see, right? So this is this obliteration. And uh, so again, should denotate. This is what point? This is meeting point of more coronal suture. This is coronal suture. This is suture, sagittal suture. So this point is bregma. So here the obliteration of sutures first occurs. And this coronal suture, sagittal suture, and the posterior lambdoid suture. So point. And the age changes in cranium. With age, the bones become thinner and lighter. And there is the diploy. The diploy is uh, uh, spongy bone between the outer and inner table of the uh, skull. Uh, it becomes filled with a gray gelatinous material. Here the bone marrow has locks its blood cell and fat giving it a gelatinous appearance. So craniosynostosis and cranial malformations. So, so the last uh, slides. So craniosynostosis and cranial malformation. First of all, there is primary craniosynostosis. Primary craniosynostosis. What is that? This is a premature closure of cranial sutures, which results in several cranial malformations. So malformation is so abnormality in the form is altered, not away from the normal form, different from the normal form. The cause of the craniosynostosis is unknown. The genetic factors are important. So prevailing hypothesis is that abnormal development of the cranial base creates increased forces on the dura matter that disrupt normal cranial sutural development. Point. Then this primary craniosynostosis is common in males than in females and often associated with other skeletal abnormalities. So the type of the malformed cranium depends on the suture which closes prematurely. Main suture, the coronal, the sagittal or the lambdoid. So primary closure of the sagittal sutures, sagittal suture in which the interior fountain is small or absent results in a long and narrow wedge-shaped cranium called scaphocephalus, scaphocephalus, it's a boat-shaped skull. So you see the picture of this boat-shaped skull. Yes, you see, boat-shaped skull. See, yes, the problem with the sagittal suture, premature cranium. You see again the slide. Yes, this scaphos valley saw that picture the premature closure of the sagittal suture. So, anterior fountain is smaller absent, has a long and narrow wedge shaped cranium. Very important these terms scaphos fell. Again, you see this is number A is scaphos fell. Again, annotate that. So that should memorize it permanently. You could see this is scaphos when sagittal suture, premature closure.
So another term is a plagiocephaly. Plagiocephaly. It is a premature closure of the coronal or the Lambert suture on one side only. The one of the coronal suture, one of the Lambert suture, on only one side. So it, the cranium is twisted and is asymmetrical. This is plagiocephaly. You could see this plagiocephaly as well. This is plagueus valley, right? So this is asymmetrical and uh, diff different from the rest of the skulls. This is the plagueus valley. Then oxys valley or teres valley. This is a premature closure of the coronal suture, which results in a high tower-like cranium called oxys valley. Premature closure of the coronal suture. This is oxys of any tower like. This is you know, tower like skull. This is a coronal suture premature closure. This is the various malformations. So the success of any is more common in females and the premature closure of sutures usually does not affect brain development. What does not affect brain development? Here's the way. Again, that picture. Now the cranial fossae, the three fossae, anterior, middle, and posterior. Anterior cranial fossa, middle, and posterior. Anterior uh, has two important clinicals, CSF rhinorrhea. CSF is discharged through the nose middle the postures. This is CSF rhinorrhea and the epistaxis is controlled from it. Epistaxis is the nose bleed. That is a middle cranial fossa. It has a CSF otoria, fracture of the petis temporal bone and uh, CSF flows through the ear. Posterior cranial fossa, escape of blood into the nape of the neck and blood later appears in the posterior triangle of neck. So in the last um, few things, which the clinical the failure battle sign is that it's a bruising for the mastoid process battle sign due to the fracture of the posterior cranial fossa. So the carcinoma of the maxillary sinus it arises from mucosal lining carcinoma of the maxillary sinus. So this was the clinicals. The, this was the fossa even that done that. All the clinicals we have done that, and uh, let me recapitulate in a while, right? So, but first of all, the head injuries are very common, right? Due to the accidents of the motor vehicle and motorcycle, there's the complication, hemorrhage, infection, and usually to the brain and cranial lungs. And So then is the headache and facial pain. There is headache is due to the tension, fatigue, or mild fever. So sometimes it, uh, it could be due to very serious intracranial problem, such as the tumor, brain tumor, or the subarachnoid hemorrhage or meningitis. Then headache and facial pain continued. Facial pain is known as neuralgia. This is a stabbing or throbbing pain along the course of a nerve, and the could be diffuse the facial neuralgia, localized otalgia and otalgia, earache and toothache. Then the injury to the superciliary arches, which can lead to the black eye. This is black eye picture. You could see the ecchymosis, the black eye picture. Then the malar fresh, malar flush. What is that? It occurs in tuberculosis and SLE. Here you see the cheeks, so red, this flush. The cheekbones, the prominence of the cheek, the zygomatic area. Then the fractures of the maxilla and the associate bones. These are the less for one fracture, less for two fractures, less for three fractures. Here they are all these three. For number one, less for one, you see it is above the maxillary alveolar arch. So it crosses horizontally. And number less for two is the between the or two orbital cavities and across the maxilla 
and the number three list for three is the on the, the zygomatic bone and this middle crossing the nasion and the orbital fissures. So this is the fractures of the calvaria, which could be due to various positions like this. You can see depressed, linear, comminuted, and the basilar fracture. I told you already. In blue picture, you can see the severity when it hits the head. So two words, craniotomy and craniectomy. So what are they? Yes, this you see it again for just for a bit. So let me try to annotate. Yes, uh, with a spotlight, you could see this is the bone flap, right? So removed over here and with the muscle overlying and the skin that we see overlying skin and muscle. And this will be helping in healing and uh, cosmetic reasons. This is the molding of canaria to the caput succedaneum, the swelling during the childbirth, with the fontanelles anterior, posterior, especially uh, slide on each other. Age changes, the deciduous or milky teeth, replaced by permanent teeth, and with age, they occur increase in the size of the paranasal sinuses. Here are the sinuses, I told you already. Obliteration of cranial sutures. So, from internal, the Kirk's internal site ages 30 to 40 years, and 10 years later on the external surface. Obliteration, cranial sutures, fibrous joints. You could see such as. So, this is the point primary craniosynostasis, craniosynostasis, and cranial band formation. So genetic factors are involved, no determined cause by its structures. So it is common in males though. And uh, sagittal suture is prematurely closed, so it will result in scaphocephaly. And the coronal or lambdoid suture on one side is closed, is plagiocephaly. This you could see this. If this is Scaphos Valley. This is uh, which suture is close, especially this sagittal. Here you can see tower like, the sport like. This is Scaphos Valley, sport like skull. This is Plagueus Valley. See? Then the last oxys valley, coronal switcher is involved. This is the tower like skull. You could see in the last oxycephaly. You see in this C picture, oxycephaly, tower like skull, in the glowier of uh, uh, your uh, which sutures, coronal sutures. This is the cranial fossae, anterior, middle, and posterior. I told you already what complications are present into the these. So, battle sign, I told you. Bruising in the mastoid process and CA carcinoma of maxillary sinus is common. So, with this, thank you very much for listening to this clinicals of cranium.